Our story begins early this summer. A little while back, Intel had announced its i9 series of CPUs, but that really wasn't much use to me in the small form factor world. A few months after that, one of my good customers emailed me saying that we needed to do a build because ASRock had just announced their X299 Mini ITX motherboard. Not just any build, a mini build. And he wanted to go all out with a 1080 Ti. At this point, there were two little voices on my shoulders. The responsible one that helps me do my taxes on time, keeps me from procrastinating, and stops me from drinking tequila on a Sunday night said, <laughs> whoa, no. The irresponsible one that tells me to race motorcycles, invest in cryptocurrency, and stay up on Sunday night drinking tequila said, <laughs> when can we start? I'm sick of calling ITX hardware monstrous, but there really isn't a word to describe the excessive technology that is crammed into 39 square inches. Three M.2 PCIe slots, dual Intel Gigabit Ethernet, quad channel memory, oh yeah, and uh, <laughs> i9 support. This teeny board is loaded for bear and best at home in a massive case with enough room to keep the giant coolers from melting a hole in your floor. Intel lists the i9-7000 series at 140 watt TDP, but it kinda makes me feel like I missed a conversion from metric to standard because keeping it cool required the force of a hurricane manufactured by Dynatron. Even at ear shattering RPM, our temps were not amazing, but they did hold. This was thanks to the new Skyreach 4 Mini, which I chose over the S4 Mini Classic because I needed as much venting as possible. I quickly found out that the coolest orientation was 180 degrees out from the S4 MC, with the GPU at the bottom. Interesting. I also discovered that the ASRock X299 ITX will boot with RAM in any of its four slots, which let me leave two blanks so we could have hot air exit the CPU cooler and vent out the top. After some testing, I also learned that the i9 is terrible for gaming. Absolutely terrible. Intel knows this too, which is why they have a special software application that you need to run in combination with a UEFI setting in order to get gaming performance just tolerable. I was getting barely 15 FPS in PUBG before running Intel Turbo Boost Max 3.0. This application gimps your CPU by disabling cores and shutting off features, so it's best to only run it when you need to for games. After running it, I was able to average about 50 FPS in PUBG. Still far behind my current i5 system, and I can pull well over 120 with the same GPU installed. But you don't buy this CPU for gaming. You buy it so you can have bragging rights. Also, so you can cut your render time in unlimited multi-thread applications by staggering amounts. I usually pay Autodesk for cloud credits to do my renders, but with this CPU at full turbo, I tore through the renders my desktop would take until the next ice age to produce. But I didn't even care how fast this machine was. I hated it, and I knew my customer would too. You see, it was so loud, even during word processing and internet browsing. 17 year old me wouldn't have cared, but that kid was obnoxious. Sorry mom and dad, at least I wasn't into drums. The first most offender was the Dynatron fan, which is a high quality unit, but it's meant for a server room where techs wear earplugs. I replaced it with a noise blocker fan, which required some tool work, and it did help quiet things down at a cost. My temps were much higher now, still under 100 degrees Celsius, but I mean... Next up were the dual screamers in the Eurocom 780. I imagine this is what a three-year-old banshee sounds like throwing a temper tantrum. They were bad at idle. Under load, it was intolerable. So out they went. It would be fun to make an RC car out of these motors though. I hacked up the wiring harness and spliced in two Noctua A420s. These little guys move a lot of air for how quiet they are. The result is that at full blast, they make the same noise as the old fans during web browsing. Still noisy due to them not being PWM, but you could feel the air flowing through the unit pretty well. I had two Eurocoms in the office at the time, and my customer told me to experiment. Let this be a warning to you. So with the other, I installed a 92mm Nocto with PWM, and it is much quieter. Bulkier, sure, but at this point, I was sick of sound and wanted to take a vacation in a monastery. Before I messed with the last offender, the 1080 Ti Mini, I decided to hear what she was sounding like. Azrock's fantastic tuning, their pun, not mine, was pretty decent and I was able to get a curve I could live with. The unit was much more tolerable now for everyday computing, 
but it still required big time fan RPM for prolonged heavy lifting. My last ditch effort was to polish the heat sinks of the CPU and GPU and use liquid metal tin. Not something I recommend to everyone due to the short lifespan and possibility of corrosion or leakage. With the fans off the 1080Ti's heatsink, I wanted to test out a new feature of my S4M, the dual 92mm fan mounts, which can be placed directly above the GPU's heatsink. I was hoping that by using two Noctua PWM fans here, I could get a much better tone. I'm happy to say that in this instance, the fan mod for the 1080Ti worked. Temps were stable, boost clock held out okay, and best of all, the noise was tolerable. Now it was at this point in the build where some really serious life issues popped up and I had to take a break from everything. My time away from my business and this project gave me some space to think. On the one hand, I was happy with what I was able to accomplish for tuning this crazy mini. You might think this is a niche build, but I actually get quite a few emails ask me about a 1080 Ti and an i9 inside of a mini. And I have to say, after attempting it myself, it's just not something I recommend. Despite me being able to achieve a pretty decent tune on this system, it still left me wondering what could happen if cooling was no object. Plus, I'd already built this crazy system at y'all's request. It was time to think about trying to achieve another crazy build. A water-cooled build. A water-cooled mini build. So I hope to see you guys back next week for part two. Liquid cooling, a mini. <laughs>